I, uh, I want to begin today with a few observations on China because the media's focus on the current pandemic uh, risks missing the bigger picture of the challenges presented by the Chinese Communist Party. First, basic facts. China has been ruled by a brutal authoritarian regime, a communist regime, since 1949. For several decades, we thought the regime would become more like us through trade, scientific exchanges, diplomatic outreach, letting them in the WTO as a develop, developing nation. It didn't happen. We greatly underestimated the degree to which Beijing is ideologically and politically hostile to free nations. The whole world is waking up to that fact. Pew reported, I think it was this past week, that 66 percent of Americans have an unfavorable view of China. That is a direct result of the Chinese Communist Party's choices, which are influenced by the nature of the regime. And the nature of that regime is not new. Second point, on the bigger picture. The Chinese Communist Party's response to the COVID-19 outbreak in Wuhan have accelerated our more realistic understanding of Communist China. The party chose to destroy live virus samples instead of sharing them or asking us to help secure them. The People's Liberation Army has claimed more features in the South China Sea's international waters, sank a Vietnamese fishing boat, threatened a Malaysian energy prospector, and declared a unilateral fishing ban. The United States condemns these unlawful acts. The Chinese Communist Party chose to threaten Australia with economic retribution for the simple act of asking for an independent inquiry into the origins of the virus. It's not right. We stand with Australia and the more than 120 nations now who have taken up the American call for an inquiry to the origins of the virus so we can understand what went wrong and save lives now and in the future. The Chinese Communist Party also chose to pressure the World Health Organization's Director General into excluding Taiwan from this week's World Health Assembly in Geneva. I understand that Dr. Tedros' unusually close ties to Beijing started long before this current pandemic, and that's deeply troubling. President Xi claimed this week that China's acted with openness, transparency, and responsibility. I, I wish it were so. It's been 142 days since doctors at Wuhan Central Hospital first started sharing information about a SARS-like virus. And yet, today, as we all sit here this morning, Beijing continues to deny investigators access to relevant facilities, to withhold live virus samples, to censor discussion of the pandemic within China, and much, much more. If the Chinese Communist Party wants to demonstrate real openness, real transparency, it could easily hold press conferences like this very press conference and allow reporters to ask him anything that they would like. Third. China's contributions to fighting the pandemic are paltry compared to the costs that they have imposed on the world. This plague has cost roughly 90,000 American lives. More than 36 million Americans have lost their jobs since March. Globally, 300,000 lives could be as much as $9 trillion, according to our estimates. Cost imposition on the world by the Chinese Communist Party's failures. The United States has responded with about $10 billion to benefit the international response, everything from vaccine research to funding for preparedness efforts and humanitarian aid. That's compared to a promise of $2 billion from the Chinese. I look forward to seeing them fulfill that $2 billion commitment. Private American businesses to nonprofits, charities, citizens have provided an additional $4.3 million from American donations to assist the world. There is no country that remotely rivals what the United States has done to help combat this terrible virus. And today I'm pleased to announce another $162 million in foreign assistance, bringing our total commitments dispersed to more than $1 billion since the outbreak began.